I've been in cybersecurity for 10 years, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you seven things I wish I knew before starting my cybersecurity career. And hopefully, you'll learn and won't make the same mistakes that I did. Industry data shows that nearly 60% of hiring managers care more about a candidate's portfolio than their actual resume. That fact alone tells you why getting hired isn't about stacking certifications. It's about showing proof that you can actually defend a network and operate in a SOC. You see, most people learn this the hard way. People spend thousands of dollars and hours on certifications only to realize that employers prioritize demonstrable skills and hands-on experience over paper. And you may ask why. Well, that's because a degree or certification doesn't accurately reflect skill set or ability. Now, today, I train SOC analysts, and what I'm about to share with you is direct but practical and definitely necessary. By the end of this video, you'll know how to start building a portfolio that demands interviews even if you're starting from zero. And the first step you need to understand is certifications in general. Here's the thing, certifications are not gonna save you. Passing the Security Plus or any other entry-level certification is definitely an achievement that conveys you have discipline and baseline knowledge, but not ability. Here's the reality. Many employers will still seek applied proof of your skills beyond the certification. A credential can open the door, but what happens to get you in the room is evidence that you can respond to real alerts and reduce actual risk within an environment. Certs are used for skill building. However, they're not used in place of experience. Industry surveys actually back this data up. Almost 6 out of 10 hiring managers say that portfolios carry more weight than resumes. That reflects a shift in how candidates are actually gauged, and that is paper credentials only set the stage. Demonstrable work is what wins the role. Certs open the doors, but evidence launches and develops careers. Think of it like knowing all of the football plays, but never actually having stepped onto the field. Under pressure, the difference between theoretical knowledge and genuine application is certainly obvious. A multiple choice exam won't help when you're staring at an obfuscated power cell script at 2 a.m. That's why labs like Capture the Flag Challenges, Hack the Box, and different projects actually matter is because it forces you to think like an attacker, test the layers of defense, and document your process just like a SOC analyst would. I've actually seen this disconnect firsthand. Smart candidates stacked with certification acronyms, but they struggle to walk down a basic alert. Now on paper, they know the frameworks backward through and through, but in practice, they can't map that knowledge to prioritizing incidents or cutting through the noise. That gap is what sinks job interviews fast. The fix is actually pretty straightforward. Pair every credential with tangible artifacts that you can apply in real life. That could be a SIM dashboard that you built in Splunk or in an Elk stack. It could be a threat hunt report from a capture the flag challenge. Or it could be a write-up of a ransomware containment exercise where you track the mean time to respond. The Each one of those examples becomes a living demonstration that you know how to take action and not just pass an exam. Here's a quick step. Pick one certification you already have and decide on a single artifact to associate with it. Leave it in your notes or even drop it in the comments so you can start holding yourself accountable. Because at the end of the day, it's those artifacts that form the backbone of your credibility. And that's exactly where we're heading next. Building the kind of portfolio that shows proof, even if you're still chasing your first job. You need to build a killer portfolio, even if you have zero experience. No matter where you're starting, the single best career lever you can pull is building a portfolio that proves you can actually do the work. Employers are clear on this point. They want evidence, not just claims. In fact, industry surveys show more than 90% of tech recruiters look at GitHub or open source contributions when they review their candidates. That means if you publish what you build, even small at-home labs, you're already signaling you understand how the field operates. So where should you begin? Start with three projects that show range without being overwhelming. First, you're gonna wanna set up a SIM with log ingestion and triage demo using a free Elk or Splunk instance. 
Then you're going to want to feed those sample windows logs and show how you would detect, prioritize, and work those alerts. Second, you're going to want to build a simple firewall with rules and set those rules to block traffic and then write an incident report about it and how you tested and why it mattered. And third, you want to create a basic malware analysis notebook where you take down a sample, walk through the safe or static behavioral checks, and explain what indicators you pulled out. That's enough to showcase your skills with respect to network defense, system hardening, and your analysis capabilities in a real, measurable way. What makes these projects convincing isn't just the lab itself, it's the actual documentation of the process. Every item in your portfolio should have five parts. The objective, tools used, step-by-step actions, outcomes with metrics if possible, and an executive summary. These objectives are what show you have a clear target, and the tools prove that you have the common tech stack knowledge. Steps detail how you think under pressure, and outcome demonstrates the results. That executive summary? Yeah, it's going to translate everything into something a manager can understand and read with under a minute. When you follow this structure, your portfolio becomes more than just screenshots. It's legitimate confirmation of a real analyst work product. Here's the milestone I'll set for you. In the next week, I want you to finish one small, well-documented project. For example, you can configure a SIM to pull Windows logs and write a full incident report using the five-part template I just provided. That is a tangible first win that gives you momentum to layer on more complex projects. Now, once you've landed the basics, the next step is making your lab environment feel less like a classroom and more like a legitimate enterprise security operations center. And that's because you want your SOC to mirror a real-world SOC role, which are expanding fast. Projections put the growth at over 30%, and that demand is exactly why your lab needs to mirror how a SOC actually works. Book knowledge doesn't prepare you for handling alert cues and real incidents. The only way to accomplish this is by practicing with real tools and workflows that analysts use every single day. Start with the SIM. Splunk has a great free resource called BOTS, which stands for Boss of the SOC, and that will allow you to actually log into a real Splunk instance, interact with data, run real search queries, and that will allow you to get a real taste for how this tool actually works. Then, move to an endpoint view. Spin up an open source EDR tool or even use a vendor free trial. Collect the telemetry. Practice detecting suspicious PowerShell execution or persistence attempts. Then add one more layer, simulate lateral movement in a test environment and document exactly how you would contain it in a production-like setting. Together, these scenarios are going to give you the coverage across a network, endpoints, and various attack chains. Just remember, daily repetition matters. SOC analysts deal with volume, so you need to train for pattern recognition. Create scenarios where you're forced to separate the noise from real risks. That's a real skill that every SOC manager is concerned with. Build dashboards that plot login failures, malware beaconing, or outbound traffic spikes so you can see the story and the data that you're looking at. We call this being able to see the tree amongst the forest. Create runbooks for common issues so you can respond systematically instead of improvising every single time. Now, if you want to go further, treat your practice like actual shifts. Time yourself on triaging a batch of alerts. Track how long it actually takes you to spot the real issue and close it out. That's what we call your mean time to respond. All of these metrics are critical. And every manager is going to want to make sure that you understand not just how to do your job, but why it's important and what you're going to be presenting to leadership. All of these reps are going to allow you to increase your speed and accuracy, which will come naturally. This is how you turn theory into real instinct. And if building everything feels out of reach, use platforms like Try Hack Me or Hack the Box that simulate real incidents with evidence trails that you can investigate. They're lightweight, but they still give you documentation practice, which matters just as much as the investigation itself. Mastering these labs sets the stage for landing your first sock roll. But here's the catch. Technical output isn't the whole game. The hidden requirements that employers won't tell you start showing up once you move beyond just the technical tools. Now, technical skills may get you in the door, but the skill that keeps you there and moving up is your ability to communicate and work cross-functionally with people who are like you and not technical. 
In a real SOC, you're going to have to brief executives in plain business terms and document those incidents for legal review and coordinate with the IT teams to contain those issues quickly. This is where a lot of strong analysts hit career stalls when they can't make that jump. They know the malware, they know the log analysis, but when the budget decisions or risk trade-offs come up, they can't explain why it matters in the way leadership understands. Communication and the ability to explain business impact and context often accelerate SOC careers more than just the tools can, and that's just as important as technical skills. Companies need analysts who can bridge the gap between threat data and operational decisions. You need to be able to take the technical jargon and translate it into human-readable language. That habit you want to build is consistent translation. A simple two-part template works. First, write a one-line executive summary that states the risk in dollars or operational exposure. Then, add one short paragraph of technical details meant for your engineers or peers. That way, anybody can grasp quickly both the business impact as well as the internal mechanics. Make this your default format when you're documenting your work and incidents, and always remember to train at the speed of game time decisions of a functioning SOC. To sharpen these skills, you don't need a boss. You just need to have an audience. Write a blog post explaining your investigations in plain English, or even record a five-minute walkthrough and publish it online on Medium or GitHub. This act of teaching forces clarity. As a matter of fact, studies have shown the fastest way to absorb information is to use it immediately and or teach someone else. You retain up to 90% of information that way. This is going to allow you to build an ecosystem and community where you're committed to raising the cybersecurity hygiene and awareness in your ecosystem. The analysts that grow the fastest are the ones that increase and deepen collective understanding, all right? They're the ones who aren't chasing endless certifications. They're the ones who develop a depth of understanding and communicate with clarity and tailor their writing to different audiences. They know how to document the right details for the right readers, whether it's a peer, a manager, a technical engineer. Mastering this balances and elevates you from just closing tickets to actually influencing decisions. And once you've built your technical expertise and your communication skills, you'll be ready to present in the boardroom in a way that employers simply can't overlook. This is when you start getting flown out to conferences and pulled into different side projects. That's how you know you're on the right path. So here's how you put everything into motion. The conclusion is simple. Action wins. And that's where 75% of people fail. Start with three steps. First, build an at-home lab where you ingest some data using a SIM tool or start playing in TriHackMe or a different resource. Second, publish one documented project. You can post it on GitHub, on Medium, on LinkedIn, and make sure you include a blog post that contains an executive summary that a manager can read in just under a minute. And lastly, rehearse a five-minute incident briefing for a non-technical audience. That trio shows that you can detect, document, and communicate effectively. Listen, cybersecurity moves fast, so revisit and update your portfolio and resume every three to six months. You don't want to sit on skills and experience and then try to grasp for straws when you're articulating it. As always, folks, if you want to get real SOC experience and get recruiter-ready proof on your resume while feeling confident walking into interviews and avoid wasted months, certification stacking, getting ghosted by hiring managers, and even worse, spending $15,000 on a measly boot camp that's going to lead you down a rabbit hole nowhere fast, then make sure you click the link in the bio or in the pinned comment, and we'll make sure to see you guys on the other side. Secure your future in cyberspace.